Hello everybody. Welcome you all. I am Jagdish here from Bangalore. I am an HR professional with 20 plus years of experience. I would like to share my experience and thought with you to understand the definition of the basic wage in the light of recent Supreme Court judgment. In the understanding of basic wage, there were lot many confusions and doubts in the minds of employer as well as the Provident Fund Office because of which there were lot many litigations in various apex court across the country. Recent Supreme Court judgment has cleared all those doubts and confusions and made us understand the basic wage definition much simpler. Recent judgment of Supreme Court is going to impact the population of whose salaries are less than or equal to 15,000 as they are going to contribute more to provident fund because of which their take home salary is going to come down. I am going to cover this topic under four different headings. The first is going to be on the interpretation of the basic wage in the light of Supreme Court judgment. Second is going to be on the salary component, which are the salary components are covered under the basic wage, which are not covered under the basic, basic wage. Third topic is going to be on the salary structure, which is the right salary structure, which, is, which we are supposed to adopt. And the fourth one, is going to be on the implementation of the Supreme Court judgment and the timeline. Now let us understand what is basic wage. Basic wage definition can be divided into two parts. The first part talks about the what is basic wage and different salary components which comes under the basic wage. Second part of the basic wage talks about the salary components which are excluded from the basic wage for which provident fund contribution is not necessary to be made. In the first part of the basic wage definition, it says basic wage is nothing but the salary what is paid by an employer to the employee as per the terms of employment. And this salary what is paid, it could be either when the person is on duty or on leave or on holidays. So still it is considered as basic wage. So the, and it also, the definition of the basic wage, it also tells that uh, which are the salary components uh, considered as basic wage. Let us see which are the salary components. One is basic wage as it is, it is considered as basic wage. Dearness allowance is considered as basic wage. LTA, that is wage paid during leave is considered. And uh, maternity leave is considered. Maternity leave salary, what is paid is considered, good work reward is considered, layoff compensation is considered and even excretia it is considered if it is paid month on month then it is considered as basic wage. Not only this there are several set of uh, different types of allowances which comes under the ambit of the definition of the basic wage and for which provident fund contribution has to be made. The popular allowances is special allowance. And many employer are on the assumption that the special alliance is not part of the basic wage for which provident fund contribution is not necessary to be made. But they are wrong. It is any alliances is considered as part of the basic wage. Not only special alliance, there are set there are set of other alliances like food alliance, city compensation alliance, retainer alliance, and medical alliance, sickness alliance, casual canteen alliance, education alliance. All these alliances are considered as basic wage for which provident fund contribution has to be made. Second part of the definition talks about salary components which are considered under the exclusion list. Prominent among them are house rent allowances, overtime and statutory bonus. Apart from this, there is one more component which is defined in the basic wage that is or any other similar allowances 
this or any other similar alliances is considered as considered under the exclusion list it is this phrase which was uh, creating lot of confusion in the minds of the employer and the provident fund office the reason being this phrase is not properly defined either in pf act or in the scheme it was open for interpretation everybody interpreted in their own way because of which there are so many litigations in various courts across the country and because of which we could today see lot many allowances in salary components assuming that these allowances are not part of the basic wage for which now this uh, provident fund contribution is not made by the employer to overcome this confusion supreme court has laid down four principles to decide whether a particular allowances can be considered under the exclusion list the first principle is if any allowances is variable in nature then it is considered under the way under the exclusion list means a particular salary component if it is fixed salary component it is considered as a basic wage if it is a variable salary component then it is considered under the exclusion list second principle is if any allowances if it is linked to an incentive then it is considered under the exclusion list for example production incentive sales incentive these are all exclusions because these uh, incentives are variable in nature and it has uh, month on month it keeps changing so it is considered under the exclusion list and third principle is if any allowances is not paid across the board to all employees in a particular category then it is considered under the exclusion list for example night shift allowances night shift allowance is paid to employee only if he is coming during night time and uh, uh, general shift employees they don't get the night allowance night shift allowances so night shift allowances is paid to a particular employee for putting extra effort in such case um, it is come it comes under the exclusion list and the fourth principle is if any allowances is paid especially to those who avail the opportunity then it comes under the exclusion list for example leave encashment so leave uh, leave eligibility of an employee Uh, someone is availing leave and is going with his family and enjoying and someone is working in spite of uh, eligibility of leave for his, and he is because of business reason and if he is applying for leave and cashment then in such case that uh, salary component is excluded from the basic wage now we shall find out from when this judgment is implementable this judgment has a retrospective effect the date goes back to 1st september 2014 the reason being it is on this day that the pf ceiling was increased from 6500 to 15000 now from that day till now whatever the short payment to the provident fund from the employer side is made ought to be made along with interest and damages in future to avoid the similar situation we have to restructure the salary so that um, we comply with the uh, court's verdict now let us see what kind of salary structure an employer should have so that he comply with the court's uh, judgment and uh, you can avoid a few the further trouble ideally if an employer want to have uh, want to give only the minimum wage salary to his employee in such case he should have only two salary component one is basic and another one is dns allowance that is da and the basic salary has to be equal to or more than minimum wage it cannot be less than minimum wage whereas dns allowance is driven by the consumer price index so this consumer price index is uh, calculated and provided by the labor commissioner office on a periodic manner and it has to be equal to that these are the two salary components only su- uh, sufficient if at all an employer want to give anything more than the minimum wage 
then he can have one more salary component that is HRA house rent allowance and this house rent allowance has to be equal to or less than 40 percent of the basic wage it cannot be more than 40 uh, percent so this is the third salary component to which an employee want if at all you want to give it uh, more than minimum wage and one more thing is if there is a uh, provision to give there is a provision to give commission or incentive to his employee which is linked to the sales or production and uh, even that is not attract going to attract the provident and provident fund even hra is not going to attract the provident fund whereas the commission whatever is given to employee doesn't attract the provident fund so he so that is this commission will be the fourth salary component which an employer can have so now for those whose salaries are in the higher salary bracket for them uh, employer can decide and uh, have one more salary component that is special allowance or any other allowance so you can name it in any uh, in any way so you can also have one more salary component that is special allowance which is a fifth salary component and that special allowance can be uh, uh, there provided if the sum of basic plus da is equal to or more than 15000 so 15000 is the ceiling fixed by the provident fund so anything above 15000 it is not mandatory to contribute to provident fund so unless and until the basic plus da is up to 15000 we cannot have one more uh, special allowance component so after fixing 15000 put together basic and da put together we can have one more salary component that is special allowance so this is how the salary structure has to be we also should know what are the other implications because of restructuring of the salary the first impact is on the take home salary of the employee the reason being um, when there is an increased contribution of provident fund because of the increase in basic salary the automatically the take home salary gets reduced so if employer want to protect the take home salary of the employee then the salary restructuring he has to do it uh, during increment time so some adjustments can be done and still the take home salary can be protected not only the net take home uh, impact on the net take home salary there are other implications like um, there are statutory payouts like gratuity bonus and overtime allowances these uh, payouts are directly connected to the basic salary as there is an increase in basic salary so proportionately there is going to be an additional contribution on on gratuity bonus and overtime allowances so keeping these things in mind uh, hr has to design the salary structure with this i would like to conclude my presentation um, i have covered most of the topics if you still have any confusions or uh, queries, you can uh, contact me. Um, Jagdish, this side, I am thank you for uh, patience hearing.